If one was to ask the question, what is the smallest country in Europe, responses such as Montenegro or perhaps Kosovo may come to mind as that these countries do not have as much land mass as other surrounding countries such as Serbia or Hungary, but any of these locations would be incorrect. Because the smallest country on the European continent is in fact Vatican City. Most may think of the Vatican, which is the home of the Pope and many, many Catholic faithful, as being a part of Rome, Italy, but it is a completely separate entity, not tied to any one country. It is situated on land that is within the boundaries of Italy, but it is not governed by them at all. It is a distinct territory under full ownership, exclusive dominion, and sovereign authority and jurisdiction. It has its own flag, as well as a coat of arms dating back centuries, the initial creation of the Vatican is said to be dated to the 8th century when vast swaths of Italy were considered papal states, but the actual creation date is a bit on the murky side. The area known today as Vatican City was put in place in 1929, and it is the smallest state in the world at only 121 acres. The Vatican has its own army and entrances and exits are guarded by Swiss guards in full medieval regalia. The main constructions are built of stone and were in fact built by stone masons who were associated with the Knights Templar, whose association with the church goes back many centuries. The Knights Templar were created by the church to guard pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land during the period of the Crusades, and over time amassed a vast fortune and were in fact the first international bankers. But it is not necessarily the history of the Vatican we are exploring today, but rather the secrets of the Vatican, and of those, some reaching back literally centuries, there are many to explore. Beneath the Vatican is a labyrinth of passages and storerooms housing some of the most closely guarded secrets known to man. With an area encompassing over 53 miles of shelving containing more than 25,000 volumes with millions of pages of documents, the Vatican's secret archives are truly monumental in both their scope and scale. But a few examples of these many documents are items such as Henry VIII requesting a pre-nuptial agreement to the request by Michelangelo to be paid for his work on the Sistine Chapel, as well as the Chinon parchment, which completely absolves the Knights Templar of any wrongdoing, with regard to their financial feud with the King of France, who had them all rounded up and either killed outright or imprisoned, and later burned at the stake because the king owed them a vast sum of money, and rather than pay his debt, he had them all killed to remove this debt entirely. This historic event took place on Friday the 13th, and is the origin of the bad luck associated with that date. But of all the historic documents held within the archives of the Vatican, the most secretive, and perhaps the most mysterious, is not a document at all, but rather a device called the Corona Visor. Imagine a device which is much similar to one's living room television, but instead of different channels to watch your favorite episode of Seinfeld reruns, you dial it in to view different episodes throughout history. Any point in history or any event in history can be viewed on this device which is said to have a screen much like a cathode ray tube television. The origins of this story date back to the 1950s when Father Pellegrino Ernetti released a book chronicling this device's existence. Father Ernetti was on a short boat trip in Venice accompanied by Father Francisco Brun, and it was on this trip that Father Brun told Father Ernetti of the existence of this device which is said to be housed deep within the bowels of the Vatican's secret archives. Neither of these men were prone to exaggeration or to the telling of tall tales, as that each was a scholared man with many years of doctoral schooling under their respective belts, and Father Ernetti was, in fact, a Benedictine monk 
amongst other things, so the creation of some tall tale regarding a device that could see through time seems rather suspect, to say the least. Over time, much criticism and blowback was directed towards both men in regards to this topic, but the Vatican itself has never once denied the existence of this device, and did in fact issue a statement in the 1980s saying that anyone caught using such a device as this would be excommunicated. That in and of itself is enough to make one wonder if such a device could actually exist. With the advent of the Internet and mass communication, there were many supposed examples of image captures by this device depicting everything from Columbus discovering the New World to the actual crucifixion. Most who have viewed these examples say that they are nothing more than old recycled film clips from the early days of cinema, with one observer stating that the coronavisor needs a better antenna, if not a cable connection, to retrieve better images. But whatever one's view may be regarding this device, the fact remains that the Vatican has never denied its existence, and with the untold volumes of materials and items held within their secret archives, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that the Vatican could indeed have such a device. And just imagine if you could view things such as the birth of your parents, or the Neanderthal tribes making their way across the frozen land bridge to the North American continent, or the Polynesians sailing the vast Pacific Ocean and claiming new island lands for their people. Such visions would be absolutely wondrous. I would again like to thank you all for sharing this story with me, and please be sure to like and subscribe as that this helps us a great deal. And I shall see you next time. This is Professor Poppycock, signing off.